students after studying this module you shall be able to know about the criteria for sexual disorders learn about the various types of sexual disorders identify the causal factors and analyze how it develops in an individual it is believed that a sexually normal person is one whose sexual goals are aimed towards intercourse with an individual of the opposite sex or gender over the period of time psychologists have come across several cultural differences as well as changes in this area in dsm2 published in the year 1968 people who had sexual interest focused primarily on objects instead of people of the opposite sex or towards sexual activities not usually related to intercourse were also said to be suffering from sexual disorders there were two other important terms psychologists talked about namely sexual dysfunction and sexual deviation sexual dysfunctions mean the inability to achieve sexual gratification which means that if an individual who engages in a coitus or intercourse with another person of the opposite gender and does not gain sexual satisfaction then he or she is sexually dysfunctional on the other hand sexual deviation means abnormalities of attraction or gender identity which today we call sexual disorders these deviations have been classified and reclassified over many years the international classification of diseases and related health problems and diagnostic statistical measure of mental disorders have also classified sexual disorders in several categories dsm 4 tr divided sexual disorders into two general categories paraphilia and gender identity disorder criteria as per icd 10 the following criteria is based on the international classification of diseases and related health problems people with paraphilia have repeatedly occurring sexual urges extreme sexually arousing fantasies or behaviors that usually involve non living objects the abuse and humiliation of self or one's partner or kids or other strangers according to icd 10 The code for disorders of sexual preferences is F65 and the following come under within this category. Number 1 is F65.0 fetishism using and depending for sexual arousal on a non-living object and sexual satisfaction. Examples of fetishes include something ever in touch with the human body such as undergarments or footwear and some may be the kind of texture such as plastic leather or rubber fetishes are important to each individual in their own ways and thus in some cases they receive sexual pleasure when they see their partner wear that fetish or use it in some way fetishistic transvestism dressing up and wearing clothes of the opposite sex gives sexual gratification to people with this type of sexual disorder in such cases for example a man might dress up as woman or just wear a woman's undergarments which gives him pleasure or sexual excitement exhibitionism a repeated occurrence or everlasting tendency to show oneself private parts or exposing oneself to completely random people in public places usually of the opposite sex but not harming them or trying to get closer to them in this type of sexual disorder the sexual arousal does not happen then and there at exhibition spot rather the action of masturbation is conducted later in some private places this urge usually arises in people when their stress levels are high or crisis with long periods without such overt behavior voyeurism a repeatedly occurring tendency to look at couples having intercourse or similar acts the couple may also just be involved in intimate loving or undressing one another on seeing such an act the viewer may feel sexual arousal at the very spot and may conduct the act of masturbation then and there in the presence of people or the couple engaged in the intimate act next disorder is pedophilia people with this type of sexual disorder usually have a sexual attraction or a sexual choice of children especially those in their pre-pubertal or early pubertal years these people may have a preference for boys or some may prefer girls there are some pedophiles who have a preference for both girls as well as boys this type of sexual disorders is very rarely seen or diagnosed in women including among 
pedophiles are especially men who retain a choice for adult life or sexual partners. Thus, these males who are unable to get any other woman or female or sexual adult partner for themselves, they turn to children for sexual relation, using them as a substitute and sexually satisfy themselves in any way. Sadomasochism the choice for sexual satisfaction that involves tying up the partner or producing pain or harming or humiliation. If the person who chooses to be hurt or receive pain from his or her partner, then this is called sadism. If the person who is inflicting pain, then he will be the one called a mesoist. Often people doing such acts receive sexual excitement and gratification from both sadistic and mesoistic behavior. Such acts are seen as acts of cruelty by some, but it gives great pleasure and sexual arousal to such people with these kind of disorders. It is sometimes very difficult to distinguish between the act of cruelty and sadomasochism while two people are involved in a sexual act. There have been several cases of deaths where the person trying to strangle himself to get sexual gratification over strangles himself and loses the control and chokes to death. Then there are multiple disorders of sexual preferences. Like all other disorders, there is a clear possibility that the psychiatrist or the psychologist may diagnose more than one sexual disorder in one person, but none of them may be very clear. The most common combination is sadomasochism, fetishism and transvestism. Other disorders of sexual preferences. There may be many types of the patterns that might be seen in an individual regarding his or her sexual preferences, such as calling strangers and talk obscene things with them, having physical closeness such as rubbing oneself onto people in public places, performing sexually with the animals, performing acts such as tying up or gagging the partner or oneself for sexual gratification, and specific choice of people who have some sort of physical abnormality such as an amputated limb. Perspectives of sexual disorders. The psychodynamic perspective. According to Freud's theory, sexual disorders represent continuation into adulthood, diffuse sexual preoccupations of the child. In Freud's words, young children are polymorphously perverse. That is, their sexual pleasure has many sources such as sucking, rubbing, defecating, showing off their sexual equipment, peeping at that of others. Thus, psychodynamic psychologists believe that due to the fixation of the individual on this deeper or pregenital stage, sexual disorders may have risen. Freud theorized that fetishism is a displacement of sexual interest to a safer object. Transvestism is viewed as mother's presumed castration denial. Similarly, Fenichel in 1945 interpreted sadism as an attempt through cruelty and aggression to act like the castrator and inflict pain on the one being castrated which helps in relieving the stress and anxiety. Other psychodynamic interpretations say that the individual's lack of control over his or her id impulses leads him or her to such conditions. Then there is behavioral perspective to explain sexual disorders. The most basic and simple behavioral explanation for sexual disorders is that the individual had gone through the process of respondent conditioning in the early sexual experiences, specifically masturbation, that are linked with some unconventional stimulus that becomes the stimulus and that discriminates arousal. For example, if a child learns to masturbate with the help of a furry toy or a pair of women's underwear, this may lead to fetishism. Another theory may be learning theory, which explains the sexual disorders named sadism and masochism. Behaviorists believe that during their childhood, when they were loved and cuddled by other parents directly after they were scolded or punished, with the result, love and punishment became paired. The similar case can be seen in people with transvestism and transsexualism, where they were reinforced by being given attention and being told that they were cute and when they were dressed up like the sister or mothers. Albert Bandura in 1969 had argued, 
that parents may knowingly or unknowingly model deviant sexual behavior. Then we have cognitive perspective to explain sexual disorders. The cognitive perspective holds that we are born with a sex drive. The way that drive will be expressed depends on the attitudes we develop in childhood. A great deal of childhood sexual experimentation crosses normal boundaries. Children peep and display themselves. For example, according to cognitive theory, if they are linked with other predisposing factors such as spoiled childhood norm violation, low self-esteem, lack of social skills, lack of understanding of sexuality and lack of parental modeling about sexual values, they may lead to sexual disturbances. Neurosciences perspective. Since the activities related to sexual arousal is the responsibility of the central nervous system, it is possible that the sexual abrasion may be related to the neurological disorders. A number of researchers have investigated this question, but without conclusive results. Treatment In the psychodynamic perspective, the therapist provides the patient with a group or individual therapy. The therapist interprets symbolic remarks, behaviors, and dreams in an attempt to bring the unconscious sexual conflict to the conscious level so that it can be confronted and worked through. In group therapy, the troubled person is put into a situation where he or she is comfortable and knows that he or she is not the only one, a reassurance that can help him in the long run. In behavioral perspective, the offender or the client may be helped in unlearning the deviant patterns or behaviors learned early in life. A multifaceted approach combines elements of traditional psychotherapy with specific techniques for dealing with the sexual issues. The treatment is done in steps to bring the sexually deviant behavior under temporary control. One of these techniques is stimulus satiation and another is covert sensitization, where the patient is made to learn how to get involved in deviant fantasy unless he is sexually excited. Then, he is told to imagine the most ridiculous and disturbing results or consequences. This association of a pleasurable activity with one that provides extreme discomfort leads to the decrease of such behavior or activity. Another technique is the shame aversion therapy. The cognitive perspective treatment involves a procedure wherein the patient identifies the deviation supporting beliefs, challenge them, and replace them with more adaptable beliefs. Most of the cognitive techniques are typically combined with other behavioral techniques and vice versa. Finally, the neuroscience perspective treatment is also extremely helpful in curing these individuals. In various European countries, both castration and brain surgeries have been done on sexual criminals. This treatment generally being applied as an alternative jail or being hanged in some cases. Administration of anti-androgen drugs, which decrease the level of testosterone, is the most widely and successfully used treatment in today's time. A technique called penis plethysmography is also used, where an apparatus is attached to the measuring the erection of the subject while he is being exposed to an erotic stimulus. This technique, on the other hand, is not a very reliable technique. Sexual disorders over time have gained a lot of attention from the psychologist and thus have been classified and reclassified again and again in DSM and ICD. The sexual disorders can be seen in two ways, sexual dysfunctions and sexual deviations. There have been many classifications, but here we talked about ICD-10 criteria which include codes with every subtype of pedophilia. There are several causal factors that may lead an individual to be diagnosed with sexual disorders in his or her later life. Thus, there are four major perspectives which try to explain the reason behind the sexual disorders. These perspectives are psychodynamic perspective, behavioral perspective, cognitive behavioral and neuroscience perspective. There are treatment techniques and therapy techniques which have been given by each perspective to help the sex offender and patients to come out of his condition. Most of these techniques are used widely and successfully, but some have been stopped due to the doubt of their validity and reliability.